So I've got the wiring pretty well wrapped up. Uh, just a few key terminations uh, remaining. Um, and those are the power uh, wires. So right now I've just got some uh, alligator clips going to a 12 volt supply. Um, that will that's serving as, essentially as the battery would uh, just because I don't have the battery mounted currently um, but um, These are the three harnesses uh, coming into this Arduino box. Well four I should say uh, the power connectors and uh, key on or uh, trigger wire uh, from the vehicle So that's a wake command and then here uh, an 18 pin and a 24 pin Molex connector um, almost fully utilized, but I've still got some free terminals to to use, particularly over here, I've got some relay outputs and uh, MOSFET PWM outputs that are unused currently. And then this is the Type-K thermocouple output for the EGT sensor uh, right before the turbine inlet. So all those guys, uh, of course, uh, go into the box. The lid is off at the moment. That just flips over and bolts on, uh, slips in and bolts on. And uh, all that harness uh, goes in. M most of those wires go out the back and down around uh, behind the bumper um, and essentially into the space underneath this uh, trunk cover or trunk lid to sensors and uh, all kinds of units. Um, they're also, I've got to uh, run a couple uh, can high and can low wires um, through here and up to the front of the car uh, for the CAN bus. But um, I've hooked up a quick switch here uh, just to simulate, let's say, key on activity. Uh, so what you'll hear is uh, everything will power up. Uh, the oil scavenge pump for the turbo will cycle for about four seconds. I think I've got it set for three and a half seconds uh, cycling. The uh, electronic bypass valve, which is that um, uh, Mopar style 100 millimeter electric throttle body, uh, that thing will cycle open, hold, and closed. Um, and you'll also hear I've got a, a Mac valve just hanging here at the moment uh, Just because I wanted to confirm he's working. This Mac valve is just set for a static um, Let's say 50% duty cycle uh, So as soon as this thing turns on all that stuff will go um, Ultimately that boost control solenoid will uh, will work off of a boost control map um, um, And ultimately be uh, have some sort of a closed loop functionality for uh, actual versus commanded boost pressure. So I'll do that and then I'll switch over the computer here so you can see a serial monitor of the data coming from the sensors. So I'll turn this on. Oh, wrong way. There we go. So oil scavenge pump is running. That's that uh, bypass valve uh, that just closed. Um, and of course you can hear the boost control solenoid down here, clicking away. That's about 30 hertz uh, PWM frequency. And so he'll just stay going there. Um, but I will plug in the USB to the Arduino. And I'll go over here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if this will work right off the bat. Serial monitor. All right, so this essentially cycles through um, a repeating uh, and updating set of parameters. Uh, so you'll see actually a lot of these shown just twice because of the, uh, the height of the screen. But uh, let's see here, top of this is T uh, temperatures. So you see T1 temp, 24 degrees Celsius, uh, T20, which is right after the comp outlet. That's 23 degrees. T21, which is um, after both the um, the S400 and the e-boosters, saying 23 degrees Celsius, and then EGT. So that's coming from the Type K thermocouple, 23 degrees Celsius. Um, pressures, so same spots or right after the compressor outlet, uh, 93 kPa, which is atmospheric here. Um, after the e-boosters, also 93 kPa, and then uh, I've got a pressure sensor on the turbo oil uh, inlet, and it's saying 97. Uh, it is a 
gauge pressure sensor. It's not an atmos um, absolute pressure sensor, so that's darn close enough. Hey, it's pretty... Yeah, it'll cycle around a bit. Um, this is all the bypass valve, um, valve position sensors. So I've got not only the position itself of the two different positions, um, cause it's got a, uh, a value that ramps up as the valve opens and a value that ramps down, um, as the valve opens. But as also, I, I've also got a part of the program where as it cycles are initiated, um, it will record what the highest value is and what the lowest value is. Uh, of both sense of both of the let's say outputs um, and then the last three here are turbo speed which that sensor is mounted in the turbo so it won't read anything until the turbo spinning wastegate position um, wastegate is fully closed so it's zeroed out uh, and then lambda rear so uh, this is shifted by a hundred so effectively that's um, 1.34 lambda but that's uh, of course, because it's just reading atmospheric air right now. So, reading very lean. Um, and that's the default for when there's no exhaust flow uh, from that Spartan 2 controller. So boy, that's uh, over six minutes already of, of updates um, or info. <laughs> but very happy with where things are. And uh, just need to finish up the power wiring here and then uh, get everything mounted back in the back of the car here and uh, confirm some CAN bus messaging. I'm stoked. I confirmed, I think I'm over 100 and almost 190 individual wire terminations, uh, both including the harness in, all the wires internal on both ends, uh, and uh, easily over 200 if I include, include the uh, fuse box. So this has been quite a wiring exercise. And actually, I <laughs> I did goof um, when I initially wired this in, uh, this connector here, uh, going just off of my um, spreadsheet. I put all the pins that were supposed to go on the bottom. I put all of them on the top row, and all the pins on the top that they uh, were supposed to go on the top, I put them on the bottom row. So I hooked everything up. A lot of things were not working right, and I'm like, uh-oh. Uh, and then after some diagnostics or troubleshooting, I realized, oops, just a simple goof. Counting the pins locations incorrectly so that's what you get when you work until two o'clock in the morning with beer sometimes <laughs>